Well, I'm in my Solomon business app um, on the PC. I'm going to go to um, yesterday. That was a bad day. It wasn't really sunny. The day before that was a nice sunny day. Let's look at my graphs here. This is my time of use setting. So this one is 30%. That one is 25%. Then again 30%. 60%. Then 80% and 60 again. So on a sunny day, you'll see my battery is above my time of use settings all the way through. So I will be using my battery all the way through. I won't be using grit. On a cloudy day, I will be using grit. It's above because of the previous day, which was good. It's still above my 25%. It's 27, 28, 29. 30% it's 34 so it's above and then in this cloudy day it came to a time of use period where my battery was below my time of period uh, time of use period of 60% so it's only 42 it should be 60 percent and what happens now is the following you can see my consumption from year on in that period the second half my consumption and my grit is exactly the same so the grit takes over and the grit will be powering my consumption in the house what is interesting is whatever little bit of production is available there it's very little the blue that goes to the green which is the battery so the production will go to the battery still it will not drive my load the load will be straight on the grit so this isn't a bad day for me for production, which is very little sun, very little production. You see the highest was 1.96 out of the 4.4 that I've got. And I only produced 4.4 kilowatt hours, whereas the next day was 14.6. This is today actually, and we're still above. It was a bit rainy in between there. So let's look at production cloudy rainy and then it's open again so it was still enough to push my battery up to where are we now 95 percent on a previous that was cloudy rainy and you'll see here it's above again and we produced 19 kilowatt hours so i didn't use any battery let's look at my grid uh, there's the grid no grid used so another day 18.5 look at the grid a little bit of grid in the morning battery above my time of use settings so this is how i set it up i take this one down to 25 percent which is pretty low this green bar here most people won't go below 40 percent you are going to use a bit more grid then this is risky but um, because i check my system regularly i can play around with it and take the risk because if it's cloudy here there's no production and the grid fails then I've got very little battery my cutoff is set to 15% which also is pretty low but that's just in case there is a grid failure because if I get even the slightest bit of production let's go to that bad day again there we go let's look at the production you'll see in the morning there's a little bit just a little bit what's the production 30, 330 watts that's enough to drive my base load in the house. So I'm okay with going to 25, only having about 5 or 10% available if there's a grid failure and it's very cloudy like that. So this is my time of use settings. And we're going to go to the machine now and see how that, that setup will work. Right, we've looked at the graph and we decided that we want to set the time of use to be just under the graph so let's look at my system this is a day 8 kva uh, the panels is only two strings with four panels of 550 each so that's 2.2 kilowatts per uh, string they are almost producing maximum at the moment now and my battery is a 7.68 uh, kilowatt hour it's a volta stage 2 Um, my load at the moment is 3 kilowatts because the smart load is on. I'm driving one of my geysers at the moment. It's a 3000 watt geyser. So let's go to the settings. This is the day uh, 8 kVA. At the top right, you click on the gear and then system work mode. 
<clears throat> then you set uh, you don't change anything here that's other settings the down arrow is to page down basically so we page down we get to time of use you've got to tick the time of use make sure that it's ticked then there's a generator tick box if you want the generator to kick on which i don't have most people don't so you're never going to use that grid charge you can use some people leave it off i want to switch it on but i expect never to use it um, this will only really be if there was a load shedding and let's say it drops below 30 percent because there's load shedding nothing can charge it plus it's middle of the night as you can see there's no sun or it's rainy then it'll drop below 30. i've put my cutoff at 15 and my warning at 20. so this is pushing it really close because my battery isn't that large but I do want to use it <clears throat> to the maximum so in the morning the sun will charge it again so if it drops below that because there's no grid and there's no sun and the grid does come on again then it'll charge it up to 30 and 25 that's kind of a backup that's it otherwise I expect it to go down to 25 if it tries to go below 25 it will not go below 25 the only thing that will happen is the grid will take over <clears throat> Just for interest sake, if let's say you go to 30% and the sun, it's a bit rainy and the sun drives it to about 40%, let's say, and this period then kicks in, it isn't 60. Because it's not ticked, it will not push up to 60. If it was ticked, it would push it up via grit to 60. I don't want to do that because I don't want to charge with a grit and then decharge, discharge the battery, charge with a grit, discharge the battery. You're adding cycles to the battery and that doesn't make sense so if it's at 40 and there's a power outage then at least i got 40 as a backup for an hour or two or whatever is going to be needed so i don't tick the ones later in the day i'll get to how we set that up just now the 60 percent then means let's say i'm at 40 and it's sunny it's daytime i'm at 40 it goes over to 60 it will mean that my whole house will be driven by the grid the solar, however, will not assist. The solar will go directly into the battery. Something I just noticed. So that was quite interesting. So in this scenario, if it's 40, when 60 comes on, you will use um, grit and all the solar will go to the battery. So you understand this one. This is quite an interesting and important one to know. So this is just the bottom of where you want it to be at at least or when you want it to change over to grid. This is normally the one I put at 80. So sunny days it would have gone to 100%. Then from 5 o'clock the sun goes slightly down. We might be cooking at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock using microwaves and induction stoves. I'm willing to let the battery drop down by 20% but I don't really want to drop it down too much because we're cooking and that can drop it down quite a lot so I want it to go over to grit when it gets to 80% so if we're really going to cook a lot then let's use grit for that it'll stop at 80% and then when when this period kicks in the 8 o'clock period kicks in it will start using the battery again down to 60 y 60 while on the graph we saw that 8 o'clock till 12 at night I want it to be at least 60 and it should be from 8 o'clock till there it should be 20 percent should be enough to drive us through because we're not using any power hungry equipment then from six o'clock uh sorry six sixty percent twelve o'clock at night through the next morning it can drop to 30. now i've seen that i use about five percent per hour and that's now the base load during the night when we are asleep so it should get to about 30 close to there sometimes you put something on in the morning and i'll use a bit of battery because it's just before the sun comes up again i'll use i'll let it go to 25 and then let the sun uh, charge it again that's the maximum use of solar to charge your battery so this is all just minimums i want those minimums now the danger of taking it that low is let's say it is rainy a total worst case scenario where you've got uh kind of a perfect storm in a negative way you have, don't have grit you don't have sun and your battery is very low then you're a little bit in trouble that means you've got to switch off everything that's going to use um, power that's everything that heats 
uh, stoves, geysers, anything like that will switch off. The little bit of sun that is out might even only give you 5% to 10% if it's really rainy. You're not going to get much. You might get 400 watts or 600 watts on my 4.4 kilowatt hour uh, array. But that's enough to drive my base load. We'll just have to handle that then. Uh, that's the way I think of it. Uh, everybody is different. Everybody's needs are different. You've got a different system. You've got different needs. You've got ACs. You want comfort rather than saving money. All of those factors differ. So you must set this according to how you want it and what, what your needs are. So these are my settings. Don't copy them just like that. Learn from them. Know what they do, how they do it. And then you put it in the way that you want it according to your needs. If you want to save money or if you want comfort. Because those two don't always match. Uh, they meet in the middle somewhere. But you're going to lean to the one or to the other. So set it according to what you want there.